Hi YouTube. This is Mary once again. Thought I'd make this quick video. Had a few things on my mind and wanted to get back on track as to why I made started making YouTube videos and sometimes you can get off uh, track and do something different, but I want to stay on track with the channel of uh, why I made the channel and I, I I am a spiritualist person and I have said that I'm a witch which everybody is a witch I've stated that before simply because we command our world we speak and things happen so that's my definition of a witch. I'm not a witch that goes around cursing people or wishing bad things on anyone. That's just not in my nature. But the, the reason why I make the channel, I want to be of service to people and to maybe help light the way because we are the light. So if I can light, light your way and you can light mine, we can help each other. But... I want to talk more about learning to know yourself and listening to the voice that's within. And you don't listen with these ears. It comes from a place, and I can't even describe where it is. I mean, it's not a, you could say intuition, or, but I want to talk more about that. I was thinking about that as I was driving from the grocery store today thinking about when I was a kid, a uh, young kid. And, and most children, they don't hear that inner voice. I heard the inner voice when I was in the third grade. But before then, it's like you don't have, a, uh, you don't hear anything. And it's nothing to tell you not to do this. Don't do that. I guess that's why kids just get into so much stuff and I was one of those kids. I remember if that was, I had a habit of picking up stuff and putting it in my nose or my ears or stuff like that. And it, it wasn't, I didn't hear any a voice that say, don't do that. So I guess you get a certain age, you get in tune with yourself because when you're young, you're so busy exploring. And then, and you don't remember. I don't think you remember what happened when you put things, your finger in things, because I remember I used to stick my finger in bottles and they would get stuck or tight places. And I stopped sticking things in my nose one time when it got stuck. Oh, I was so scared. My grandmother uh, got the rock out of my nose. But the intuition voice, the voice of my intuition, I heard that when I was in the third grade. I mentioned it before, but I had lost my spelling book and I was so afraid. And I prayed that night and I said, I said, Jesus, please help me find my spelling book. And this voice, it was a woman's voice, but it was an older woman's voice. The voice says, you'll find your spelling book tomorrow. It'll be a little hard on you, but you'll find it. I go, and I looked around to see if that was my sister. She was sound asleep. I say, who was that? And I'm just puzzled, but I went on to bed. And the next day, when I crossed the street where the crossing guard is, the same voice said, remember, you're going to find your spelling book today. And I was oh, but you know, you forget it. And, get on to school and after lunch I'm in the classroom where the, spe where the spelling book I lost and this lady was so mean she was a mean to teach in the whole school she said Mary Sales come up here and I knew I had lost my spelling book but I was sneaking on and working with another student looking at her book and I, I get to her desk and she said where's your spelling book I said Miss Haswell I lost it I don't know where it is and she reached in her drawer, to, and I, she kept that strap in the drawer. And I said, oh, she going to whoop me. And I just fell out on the floor, just crying and pleading for mercy. 
pleading for mercy. And she said, Gal, get up off that floor. I ain't going to whoop you. And she pulled out my spelling book. I said, don't you lose this spelling book no more. And I got up. And that was just, but it, things happened just the way that boy said it was going to happen. So that was my first time being aware of a voice or intuition. But my, my intuition comes in in an audible sound. And some people get a gut feeling, and it, I guess you could say it's a gut feeling, but I hear it. And and, and then maybe a month or so later, I heard the vo later I heard the voice say again. The, I'm walking down the street, going to the project, and the voice says, "Stay on this side of the street. Don't cross." Because you know we would usually cross the street and take the shortcut through the woods in the project, get to your the project. So I said, "Oh, that's that voice again." So I stayed on that side of the street. I didn't take the shortcut. But when I got to the spot where the shortcut was, the path, there was a, a man. He was a, t a, a teenager, and I'm only uh, nine years old. Yeah, nine. And he's standing there masturbating with his pants down to his ankle. Hey, Sonny. Uh, down to his ankle, he's masturbating. Now, can you imagine had I crossed that street and got into that path, nine times out of ten, that man would have raped me. Maybe killed me, I don't know, but being raped at the age of nine. So this voice, or intuition, is what I heard at that age. And I, I always, I don't know, I was searching for that voice. And who is that voice? Who is it? And I, the voice is me, and it's it's my voice, and I guess I was so young, I, I had to be somebody adult for me to obey, because if it was a child's voice, I'd say, oh, another playmate or something, so I am, I am so thankful that I'm able to recognize the voice, and I, I, we all have it, <laughs> have that voice, and we just have to recognize it and want to be one with it so we can obey and and just feel protected. That's, that's what it was. It's, it's a protection. And I don't know if that voice is me when I was in the ninth, I mean, in the third grade. If that voice is me in the future looking out for me when I was little. I don't know how, how that works. But when I hear the voice now, it sounds just like me. So it's not like it's a real old lady saying something. It's, it's, it's me now. So I don't know. I, I would like for people to, uh, you know, think about that. And, and the first time you ever recognize this intuition, the voice. But I just want to stay on track with that kind of... Uh, subject because that I mean the spiritual aspects I, I'm not here to play games with people and I want us to realize that we are God and it's on the power is on the inside Sonny is getting ready to uh, clown she don't understand that I'm I'm not talking to her she thinks I am but you know I always got some book <laughs> this book is called the name of the book is Ye Are Gods by Annalise Skyron. This is a beautiful book, and I want to talk to, we'll talk about this for a while. I'm just going to read a little bit. Chapter 1, How Real Are Our Realities? Do you have unanswered longings deep within your soul struggling for release? And does your heart sometimes speak louder than your mind? If you desire, if you yearn, if you hope, if you think and feel and aspire, then there is something dwelling in your little clay house that you must meet. Hmm. This day, I would like to knock at the door of your earthly tabernacle 
the body you have built and reaching in invite you to come and get acquainted with yourself that you might know yourself and that from now on henceforth and forever you might be free in order to do this it will first be necessary to compare man's reality with the things he considers unreal can one suffer more from a broken leg or a broken heart? <laughs> She's singing now. <laughs> a, break, a broken heart leaves scars that never heal. The suffering can be so intense that many have died from it. But it is the broken leg more real because it's more tangible than the broken heart. Not to those who have suffered from heartbreak, though eyes have never glazed upon a quivering broken heart, nor have ever touched one. So yeah, you can't just see a broken heart. You can't touch it. So that's what doesn't seem real. You know, somebody got a broken leg. You say, ooh, ooh his leg is broken. Oh, man. And, and then we'll say, uh, put a cast on it or a splint and it'll heal up. Give it some time. But a broken heart, we don't know. Well, sometimes we don't even know what it takes to heal a broken heart. These tangible things that man has dotted on and lived by. I said dotted. It's doted. Doted on and lived by. Let's examine them. The most real thing in our lives are food clothing, transportation, and shelter. Let's take them one by one and give to each the test of durability. What did you have for dinner two weeks ago this evening? That meal was such an important thing, yet you probably cannot remember a single thing you ate. No matter how hard you try, that is, not unless it was a special occasion. You had guests, it was a holiday, or for some reason you had a poor makeshift meal. The most important substance of life, that for which we labor incensely, it is the most quickly forgotten. The thousands of meals consumed by each individual are the most unimportant thing in our memory after we have eaten and digested them. Unless we're very hungry or gluttonous. Of course, we will still look forward to more meals, but they do, too, will join with those of the unforgotten past. Clothing lasts longer than food. It is vital. We enjoy dressing beautifully quite as much as we enjoy eating. But what has become of all the suits of apparel we have worn in the past? A husband will struggle and scheme to buy his wife gorgeous gowns on which she has her heart set upon. And later, pins with pride. She is so happy over it, she hopes the house will not burn down and destroy it if she leaves home without wearing it. I used to think about that. I get something new and I think about if the house burned down. I, I want to, yeah, oh man, I, that's, this is reminding me of how I used to if I had something new and expensive. She would rather stay home forever than appear before her friends in it. And the glamorous gown has become a repulsive thing, hated and despised. Oh, Sonny. The glory has vanished. It ends up at last in the incinerator or for cleaning rags, taking its place among the dead, forgotten elements of things that have been. So... This this goes on and on and name your cars and things and, and that's your reality. Man. Go back to uh, the suffering. It says, can one suffer more from a broken heart or a broken leg? One is physical, 
the other mental. Is it possible that the things we cannot see or touch are more powerful and lasting than the tangible things we behold with our eyes? One cannot see electricity. Neither can one touch it nor hold it in his hand. Electricity is a form of energy, yet who can describe it? Who can fathom it? What is the source of its eternal supply of vital, throbbing power? Neither can the wind be seen. So it goes on and on to tell you about the forces. And then it goes on to talk about love. Could it be possible that this physical world of ours is the unreal? The thing that is a reality today, tomorrow has passed away. Is it possible that there is a spiritual existence within us that is the eternal part of man? So, I guess when you're thinking about trying to figure out what's real and what's not, as you get older and you have the quiet time, you can. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to finish this video like I want because she wants to be, I don't know, maybe I'll get her a treat and she'll, I'm going to put it on pause and get her a treat because she's just not cooperating. I'll be right back. Mm, okay. Sorry. I had to give her a treat so she calm down. But, I'm going to talk a lot more about this, this book. I had this book a long time. But I want to show you something. This is... Let me see. These flowers. Can you see how they're still holding on? My son-in-law, James, bought me these for... Um, Valentine's Day and they are still holding on but what I do when I have uh, plants of uh, uh, flowers like that I take a take the water and put just a little bit of sugar in the water and change put a little rinse change the water every week and still put a little bit of sugar and um, I know these are gonna go but I, I just like to keep my flowers in and dry them and use them and press them in a book but yeah I am um, just here to talk about the the inner voice the inner voice is us it's our guardian angel or that's God and if God, if that's God, and it sounds like us, think about it. When you something tells you not to do something, and people always say, something told me this. That's something. Go back and think about what it sounds like and, and who it is. Who is that something? And I, I can imagine, I can just almost bet that that something or somebody is you. So you are guiding yourself. You are your guardian angel. I would say that. But um, I'm coming up on 19 minutes. And I'm going to close now. I'll be back next time. Talk to you later. Bye.